WWDN. The Wisconsin Supreme Court trying to find limits to the governor's veto powers in Madison and the Senate race between Senator Tammy Baldwin and businessman Eric Hovde is getting tighter. CBS 58's Emily Fannin was politics editor J.R. Ross discuss this week's top political stories in tonight's Capital Connection. This week we begin with the state Supreme Court visiting a case that you might remember when Governor Tony Evers last year got very creative with his partial veto pen and increased school funding for the next 400 plus years. Yes, you heard that correctly, for centuries. So that issue was before the court and while there are a lot of ideological differences on the bench, justices all seem to agree that it was absurd, quote, outrageous uh, that the governor was able to do this despite the governor having these expansive veto powers for many, many years. Well, while they all agreed that some limitations need to be implemented on the governor's veto powers, they kind of really struggled to define what that would even look like. Oh, the question is going to be, if you find this is a problem, what's the line? Now remember, governors can lose his power when it comes to an appropriation bill. So in budgets, it comes into play, like in this case, where the governor struck out a couple numbers and a hyphen to make the end date four centuries from now. Now, it's not locked in forever. Uh, lawmakers could change this law at any time. But it shows the power the governors have had. And the Supreme Court has come down on the side of the governor for decades. Uh, we basically have had a standard since 1940 that as long as there's a workable law after the veto, it's okay. While may, our voters have reigned this in over the years, uh, these, the Vanna White veto we called it, where you can strike out individual letters and create new words. Can't do that anymore. You can't stitch together different sentences, create a new sentence. Numbers, though, have not been touched. And that's a point that Amos Bradley Liberal brought up. Well, okay, letters aren't numbers. So you're telling us that we should change this, but voters haven't changed the numbers thing. What should we do? Well, they could go back to amendment. They could override the veto. Or lawmakers could write better bills. They look at this language, these bills, trying to find ways to prevent the governor from doing this. Why does it matter to you at home? Well, in theory, the governor has guaranteed your kid an increase in spending between property taxes and state aid for 400 years. Again, lawmakers could change it. The example of how governors have been creative over the years and found this way to impose their will in the budget that's why lawmakers send them. Right, and it's a huge deal, especially in divided government yeah. as well. All right, let's move on to the U.S. Senate race, and we want to focus first on Republican candidate Eric Hovde, who was at a rotary appearance in Milwaukee that was co-hosted by the Milwaukee Press Club. Talked about a variety of issues, but some of the biggest ones was him defending a lot of uh, political ads that are out there attacking him for statements that he's made in the past. So what he suggested also the, earlier this week is raising the eligibility age for Social Security for people under the age of 40 years old. He also addressed an ad that says he... Uh, uh, completely opposes abortion, which is what he said in the past, but now he's shifted his position on that issue. He does support exceptions for rape and incest and wants the issue to go before voters through a referendum. So these are some of the hot button issues. And once again, defending his stance, but make it clear that you did say these back in 2012 when he was also running for U.S. Senate. And some of the big news in this race this week has been the Cook Blue Report, which kind of like prognosticates about races, moved this to a toss up from a lean Democratic race. What's that mean? Well, there's a perception nationally that this race is now basically a jump ball. The question I've gotten from people or asked about this past week is, has Mo Hubby created momentum or is this just Wisconsin? Mm -hmm. We are a purple state, 50-50 most of the time. Is this just it getting to be mid-October and people are going, okay, I'm locking in. We see polls that show us that Hubby is lagging Trump a little bit. Uh, he has not consolidated the Republican base just yet. His best hope is if Donald Trump wins Wisconsin by a point or two and pulls him across the finish line. Now, for his own momentum, we are seeing some signs that he's moving his messaging toward basically a, a, a message on transgender issues. We're all seeing it nationally. Uh, New York Times has a story this week that there were like $65 million in ads by uh, Donald Trump and Senate candidates about this issue. And talking to Democrats, they're seeing subtle movement since these ads began. The question is, is that going to be permanent or is it like a kind of a pullback moment for some voters of, okay, is it going to be pause about Timmy Baldwin? Am I going to be okay with her in the end or not? But that's something to watch. Does that momentum continue? And does Trump continue to prove in the polls because he's the best path for Hubby? We're seeing signs that Harris's post-convention, like, in, in momentum has waned a little bit. Where's it going to go from here? And continuing on the U.S. Senate race, we'll looking ahead to next week on Friday. It will be the first and only debate between Baldwin and Hovde. It will be hosted by the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. And Jerry, you bring this up all the time when we talk about debates. It's always looking for that viral moment, either good or bad for either candidate. It's a Friday night. I'll be watching, obviously. I'm not sure people at home will. But if there's that moment, you'll see it in an ad right away. If there's no ad about the debate, 
probably a draw for the impact on the race. And we'll see if it shifts any of the momentum between uh, either of the candidates. All right, that will do it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us.